what's going on my friends it's dave sharp welcome to wake up legendary and uh this morning we have a another wonderful guest as you can see special needs mom of four dives head first into her online business and she's got a story to tell nicole welcome to the show hi thank you for having me you're so welcome uh where are you calling in from uh ohio what part of ohio dayton I was going to guess Dayton. I yeah. swear to God, I was going to guess Dayton. <laughs> I should have just said it. Like I would have been like a mind reader. Yeah. Nope. Dayton. So um, lovely. I also want to notice your sign in the back. I do not negotiate. So I'll be, you know, I, I got a tough negotiator here or someone who says no negotiations. Is that a sign for your family? It, it is. It's a sign to remind yourself of something. Negotiate. We don't negotiate with fear. We don't negotiate with. You know, we we decide something, we stick to it. We don't negotiate. Mostly it was for food for the kitchen, but no, it's for everything. <laughs> nice, nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah, it's it's uh, definitely some non-negotiables if you're going to be successful as an entrepreneur. 100%. You're probably learning. So tell us what led you here to Legendary Market or what were you looking to get out of this program? Oh, yeah. So it kind of found me. Um it was just one of those things where, you know, kind of a similar story with anybody else, you know, you're in a situation and you're looking for um, ways to supplement your income. And, um, you know, my husband was working a lot of overtime, our house was in foreclosure. I have a special needs son who needed a service dog, um, all the things. And so, um, you know, I was just sitting on my phone one day and saw another girl that was talking about legendary or, you know, and, um, so I watched for a while and decided to check it out. And that's what led me here and it's changed everything. So. Wow. Wow. So almost by, um, you know, almost by kind of happenstance, but a little bit of, but, but also there was some intention out to the, you know, the universe, God, whatever you believe in, may have been answering some, 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 some prayers, some intentions, even though you were just living your life and doing what you needed to do. So here you are, right? This thing come up on TikTok. I mean, you weren't really even looking. Right? I, no, 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 a hundred percent. That I believe this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's. It's. I think there's there's a, a unique gift in being able to notice a gift, even when you don't ask for it, right? Or when you're not like praying hard every day for it, but to be right. like, wow, you know, this is a moment, you know, this is, this is, let me just take this all in and, and, and really make sure that if I, if I ignore this, that this wasn't meant for me, you know, that this wasn't the, the, you know, a solution. And I see that with a lot of, human beings every day. We have things in front of us and um, it's sometimes it's difficult to recognize that, wow, this is an opportunity, right? So how did you avoid skepticism? How did you avoid, uh, how did you not fall into, you know, negativity? I mean, which, which the internet is, 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 there's no shortage of that. How did you deal with your own skepticism of, will this work for me, et cetera? And I would assume you, maybe you still are and that's okay. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, of course, in the beginning, especially when you really don't know much about a certain thing, like, and, and, and I didn't, you know, there was skepticism. And, um, but the more that I looked into it, the more that I sat back and I just watched, um, I knew that it was something that I at least wanted to try. I mean, because I felt like I had nothing to lose, you know, and so the only thing that I deal with now is more of like that imposter syndrome where it's like, oh, wow, I'm doing this. Oh, wait, I'm doing this. I'm doing this sort of thing, you know, so I like that. the skepticism lasted a short time and then I just dove into it. And when I just when I saw that it was working and um, the amount of knowledge that I gained from it and how I've used that in other areas of my life. Um, it's just been amazing. So that's great. Is this your first try at entrepreneurship? 
Um, so I am a massage therapist and I own my own business for a long time. So okay. it's my first time at anything like this for sure. Okay. Okay. With, with that business, were you the only employee or did you have lots of employees? Just me. So you were self-employed, so, sort of like Robert Kiyosaki talks about in the cash flow quadrant to where yes. you own a business, but you're still kind of trading time for money. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense, which is sort of disappointing when you go out on your own and you're like, I'm going to start a business, but then you're like, dang it. Yeah. Dang it. Now, now I, yeah, if I want to really grow this and scale this, I need either, as he says, it, very simply systems or people, right? Mm -hmm. To help me to scale. And so now you've got uh, basically systems, people helping you. Um, so you're kind of using people in the, in a way of gaining knowledge and information and, and, and you're, du but you're duplicating yourself in multiplying yourself on videos and stuff like that with these systems on social media, are you surprised at how quickly somebody can get, you know, a business up and running in 2023 with the right knowledge and skills if they just take consistent action? I mean, a lot of people think that this business is expensive or hard. And as a business owner, you know that hard is driving around to people's or them coming to you and you staying in the, the, the studio late at night and you're, you know, you're, your body sore at the end of the day because you've been rubbing and, and right. trying to, I mean, that's hard. I also know hard construction work. I'm not trying to say this work isn't mentally hard and it can be physically draining, but the comparison of the leverage that you get now sitting in your home working versus the massage business, <laughs> what's that contrast like? How do you see hard work and how do you define an expensive business now or how has that been kind of re you know how has that been that 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 thought of you know really that physical location but how has that been shattered you know the the way that now you can use technology and some skills with a few low to no cost tools to have a business is that kind of like i mean is that is that has that been earth shattering for you yeah. or i mean what's that been like it's, it's, it truly is. It's mind blowing. Um, I had no idea the amount of success that was capable, um, just by taking this, this course and the amount of, like I said, the amount of knowledge that I gained in such a short amount of time surpasses any class college course, any, you know, anything that I've ever done previously to this. Um, and so, and to be able to be in my own home, right. make it what I want it to be and to be able to make my own schedule. And yes, it is work, you know, and you, you definitely have to put in the time a hundred percent, but I'm in control of that. Whereas I, I never had that to this extent before. Yeah. And what's the value just for some people who are sitting here listening kind of on that, that maybe that fence at the beginning of, Hey, is this really worth it? What's the value of being able to work from home and build a business, not just be able to work from home from your company or whoever you work for, but now being able to work from home on your own business without having to leave and what is the value of that? Do we undervalue that and focus too much on the commissions and the money in the beginning and let that get us frustrated instead of focusing more on the value of, wow, I get to be home. Let me be more patient. Let me be persistent with this because after all, I get to be at home doing this. Do we undervalue that? Um, I think so. Sometimes I think that, um, you know, being home, it, it is such a gift to be able to do this um, here and to be able to, yes, a lot of people, I don't know. So for me, it's more like, um, sorry, life makes me nervous. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. Want me to restate the question? Yeah, go ahead. It, I, I just, you said that the, you, that struck me when you said kind of, I get to work from home. And I feel like so many times new people are so focused on a commission or a, instead of thinking about the long term and the fact that you get to learn this business and do this business at home, 
right? And that, that's such a big deal. And we're so focused on, well, I haven't gotten a commission yet, or some of these kind of, you know, these things that they will come, but, but we undervalue. I know I often do. I get complacent, undervalue the beauty of just being able to work from home. And how much is that worth? How much does that improve the quality of my life? Even if I don't get super uber rich, mm -hmm. the ability for me to be able to work at home and make a living, I just feel like a lot of us tend to undervalue that. You know what I mean? And I just wonder, you know, having you said you had a special needs son and I don't know if you have more children, but just the, I, I would imagine there's a lot of parents listening to this. And a lot of times, again, we can get focused on the commission. We can get focused on the, you know, and, and lose touch of what you just said, which is the value of being able to do this from home. It's like, yeah. wow. That yeah. just struck me, you know, uh, uh, that we undervalue that. And so, um, you know, I, I don't know if there was really a question, but I just wonder if you could say more about that, you know, the value of of this and, and how flexible it is for those of us with kids, yeah. for those of us with special needs kids, right. or those of us who want to travel. Sure. Yeah, that that I can tell you all about. You know, I, I have four kids and my oldest. Oh, my God. I did. Four. Wow. <laughs> I thought you just had the one. OK, hello. <laughs> No, I have four kids. My oldest has autism. Um, and then I have a four, a three-year-old, a uh, five-year-old, four-year-old, and my two-year-old is two today. Um, so, yeah. Happy birthday to, to, to the two-year-old. Yeah. So to be able to be home, it's, it's, it's not just being able to work from home. You know, that's great. But in my situation, I'm, I'm not really able to work outside of the home. And that was always an issue because, you know, what are we going to do? How, how can I provide not just for the bills, but how can I provide the, the needs and the services that my son needs, you know, and, um, and, and also, you know, be here for, for my other three small children. Yeah. So there is, you, you can't put a price on that. You know, it's, it is everything to me. And the fact that I can now do that, it, it brings so much relief to just, it, it brings so much relief to me. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. It's like, wow, that's an interesting use of words, relief versus like bringing so much excitement to me. It brings so much, you know, you're like oh, yeah. bring so much relief just in, and, and I, boy, that resonates. Right. Because, I mean, how many of us, uh, whether we are in the same situation, which I'm not, and, and many of us are not with four kids, one being uh, a special needs kid and in, in, in needing to, to, to be there, uh, yeah. to, to, you know, that's that's really um, that's really a unique situation. And um, and yeah, the, the ability to have a little bit of relief. I'd like to I read a little bit of your I read a little bit of your um your your uh, questionnaire and you you said that you set everything up in december and january you started creating content and working the business working in the business right <laughs> instead of just learning um i like how you like i like how you said that like i think there's a distinct difference and there is a defining moment in which somebody goes from learning mode and kind of observing mode and kind of getting ready to get ready to actually crossing that line, having taken some sort of action to where mm -hmm. there now is no turning back, right? You've made that first step. You've stepped over that line. What did that look like for you in January? Was that pressing post and putting something out there publicly? It was. It was. Yeah. So like you said, in December, I set everything up. And then January 1st, that was it. And so I've been doing this for nine weeks. And like I, already my mind is blown. Um so yeah, it hasn't really been that long. Not at all. Mm -mm. Not at all. Um, and so what was that? Did you use that like beginning of the year as like a launch pad as like a new year's resolution thing? I mean, we're now at February 28th. What, what I'm just trying to think of some of these folks, um, you know, starting over, you know, sometimes we get started, sometimes we start over. 
Yeah. Um, can you say more about what that was like? I mean, whether it was January 1st or whether it would have to be today, what was, how did you mentally prepare for that? Well, I mean, I just, like I said, I just kind of fell into it. So it was Thanksgiving. I had posted my son's um, crowdfunding for his dog. We had been crowdfunding for a year. Well, just to be clear, mentally prepared to then take action on January 1st. Yeah. No, then that's where I'm, where I'm going with that. So yeah. like it started then I knew that I had to do something. December was the month where I just learned everything. January 1st was just a day. It was just a day that we got back yeah. from vacation. I was yeah. home and it, it just happened to be January 1st, but, okay. but I knew that that was my, okay, go. So now, was that the first day that you posted a video publicly? I mean, was that the kind of, the, 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 that was the move? Yeah. Yeah. What was it like to hit post that first time? Were you familiar with the, with the camera? I mean, is this all new, like 100% to you? I mean, this is pretty new. I mean, I'm not comfortable on camera, obviously. <laughs> you know, like this is. This you look comfortable to me. <laughs> you look, it's you good. Look is this whole thing is such a growing experience and it's forcing me to do things that I would have never done. So yeah, totally. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. You um, look great. Like as Kayla said yesterday on the show, don't let them see you sweat. Like never let your audience know that you don't know what you're doing. So, I mean, not only, you know, you, you look great, you're, you're doing, you, you look perfect. Thanks. So yeah, it was, I, I had made a few TikToks before of my kids, but no, I didn't know what I was doing. And that was the great thing about this is it just walked me through all of it. And um, it's been fun. It's been fun growing and learning how to do it. And I mean, if I can do it, <laughs> anybody can do this. It's just the determination and saying, okay, this is what I'm choosing to do and just going for it. I also noticed that you said that in kind of December, you know, even with four kids, you lived with earbuds in while doing what you had to do around the house. You'd wake up at 4.30 in the morning. You'd stay up uh, late nursing and learning. Yeah. Oh, nursing, is this, you have babies as well? Oh, yeah. Small, small <laughs> children. Wherever there was, is time, I am still doing classes, listening to podcasts, book, anything I can keep moving forward. Talk about that commitment to learning. Talk about that, that, that like really digging in and actually going through the material versus just kind of buying it and then being like, okay, what now? You know, like there's a lot of people who will buy something, a course specifically, whether it's here at Legendary or wherever. But, but obviously I've seen this over the last 10 years, buy something and then kind of go into the Facebook group yeah, or whatever and be like, where do I get started? And it's like, you know, man, oh man, I, I would just, I would, I would, uh, it's like we got ants in our pants, you know, it's like we we're, we're, we're kids that just, you know, we can't sit down at our desk, I get it. How, I, but I noticed you got earbuds in, you're moving, you're walking around. Talk, uh, talk to us a little bit about how you condense time that month of December. I, I really feel like I, you. I just had to, I was, I was hungry for it. Like I said, I was determined I was ready and yes, I have kids. Yes. I'm chasing, you know, I, I'm, I'm all over the place, but you know, I, I also know the big picture. And so I, I was, I was hungry for it and I'm, and I'm still combing through everything. I mean, I just go through I, everything all over again because there's just so much to learn and 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 move forward from um so yeah it, it was that's what it was i would wake up early when my kids were still sleeping and i'm on the computer and i'm setting up my stuff and i'm doing dishes we're folding clothes i've got the you know videos going in my ear and i'm watching when i can and i did not let the busyness of my life be an excuse for me not to do it. So it was the reason I had to do it. Can I, can I ask you a question about just energy? How do you stay, how do you get enough rest now that you've added this other thing to your life? Right? So you already were busy enough. Mm -hmm. How, how, how do you stay rested enough in order to be able to, and how do you deal with being tired, just, just, be, I mean, w this is just a question that I've never really asked, you know, that I don't ask a whole lot of people, but it's like, how do you deal with just 
how do you deal with just the 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 you know moderating your energy throughout the day and in being being able to you know not getting burnt out like is is there just are, do you have a f- special focus on on sleep i mean do you t- do you have a is there are you just kind of going 100 miles an hour and you'll figure it out later like i just wonder how somebody is as busy as you who's taking as much on and even adding more to your plate just stays rested and does self care that's a great question. <laughs> I mean, that's a great question for any mom, but I have an amazing husband and support system that anytime I need anything, I mean, I I have to tell you, I have like the husband of all husbands. He comes in and he does anything that I need him to do to give me my space um, so that I can have my space to be able to do things. Um, and I'm so fortunate. You know, again, he's military, so he's also gone a lot. But somebody asked if you guys, if you were in the military. So thank you for, and your family, uh, your husband and your family for your service. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, I, I have a great support system. But does a mom ever really, <laughs> you know, I, I think we always need rest. So yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think about where I am now and where I was when I started, I was, I was a bit younger than I am now. Yeah. And uh, I had different levels of energy then. And now I have to manage my energy, Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, more carefully Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, make sure that I uh, just, it's amazing. Sometimes I'm feeling like the world's on top of me, but it's just that I got a bad night's sleep last night. You know, and and it's it's important, although it's difficult to notice in the moment that that's what it is, but it's important that I don't make big decisions about my business, big decisions about my life, you know, start getting into this this kind of spiraling out into catastrophic thinking if something doesn't go right. But imagine something even going way wrong, like, oh, my God, I lost a, a, a profile, a social media profile, et cetera, et cetera. How do you deal with these little road bumps that, you know, they're not mountains, they're molehills, I would assume, but they can feel like mountains. How do you deal with these little pieces and what has been something that's been, okay, hey, I'm, 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 this is annoying or this is difficult. How are you dealing with little challenges as they pop up and have you had anything that's been, hey, I overcame that, but didn't think that I was. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's been challenges, you know, and, um, but if, if if there's something that I feel stuck on or something that I'm like, oh, well, that didn't go as I expected. I just kind of pivot and I find, okay, so what's the next thing that I can do to fix it? Because I'm a fixer. So I just want to like, what do I need to do? I don't necessarily freak out about it or anything. I just, okay, so that's happening. So what's next? Hmm. You know? Yeah. 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 And um, it's interesting that you said I'm a fixer because a lot of times, um, you know, and now we're being taught in society about some of these kind of tendencies. We're becoming more emotionally intelligent as a society because of social media. We're talking about these things where I bet your mother or her mother may not have even had the information or the language to be able to identify that she's a fixer, you know? So it's kind of like, the more we, this generation, our, our generations now have more information to be able to kind of identify, oh, wow, you know, I'm a fixer. Or, Gosh, I have codependent tendencies or whatever, kind of from the, the internet, really, and from, you know, just information being shared more. And, and it's less of a stigma around some of these things. So we, we talk about it more. But I tell you what, I have a lot of these things as well which, you know, gosh, being an addict, right? Recovering addict, being, being, you know, a little bit manic, uh, being, you know, I've got all kinds of, I'm also a, a, a fixer and a people pleaser in, in, uh, you know, I've got all these specific roles in my family, but you know what? I learned it through this business, how to turn all these struggles into strengths. Yes. My, I took my fixing and I learned my people pleasing and I learned a little bit more about it, but I also realized, wow, that gives me the tendency to really want to over deliver. 
and really want to be in a, it helped me to be more in a teacher role, helped me be more in the role of being able to fix something, f help people find solutions. Um, and so, you know, there's also uh, some of you may be thinking that your your struggles, these things that maybe you've even been labeled as diagnosed with, I, I don't know, I'm not not here to get too far into everybody's, you know, medical files and everything. But man, I have found how to turn my struggles into my strengths and my mess into my message through this business. I love how you said I'm a fixer. Do you see that as being now an asset in this business in, in ways? I mean, not that it's not always an asset. I mean, it can be, I know what that is like to, that yeah. can be exhausting to be fixing everybody's stuff all the time. But man, it's really an asset in this business because you've got a solution oriented mind, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I struggle with a lot of those things that you said. I mean, he, like insecurities, people pleasing, all of those things. And I'm learning so much about myself in this process of, okay, um, I can do this or I can do that. And this really isn't a big deal. This we can, you know, how do we, how do we manage that? And, um, I, I am, I'm learning a lot about myself in this process and turning those things that, you know, I, I, I thought were kind of weaknesses into strengths and it is yeah. serving me well. So you or, know what? <laughs> my friends, I'm going to tell you something. The thing that you're not allowed to talk about in a corporate interview will make you rich in a TikTok video. The things that you won't say or shouldn't say, for example, telling your story, me telling my story about being a recovering addict, mm -hmm. that would likely be something that every job recruiter would say, Dave, let's leave that one out. Let's leave that one out of the interview. If you're going to go interview for that, right? Yeah. But that's the sort of story that's made me. I mean, that story specifically hasn't made me millions, but I mean, learning how to use those stories and tell those stories in a way that obviously doesn't leave me looking like some homeless junkie. I mean, I'm, I'm learning also how to communicate those stories in a, in a hero script, you know, like, hey, here's what, what it was like for me. There was a defining moment. And then here's what it's like now and actually present it in a, in a powerful way. I also, um, yeah, there's also been other ways that I've used my, 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 my struggles and turn them into my strengths. Um, what's this been like for your family to kind of see this? What do you think is going through their head or what's come out of their mouth that, you know, has been interesting or that, you know, you're excited to maybe show your children this different side of you. What, talk to us a little bit about that family dynamic and maybe something that's stuck out that, that, that's been either cool or that you can see is important for you to share maybe some of these skills in the future with your children or at least know them. Yeah, it's been cool. I mean, my kids kind of, they're always here. So they're, they, they watch me and, you know, they're a part of it and, they think that it's that it's cool. But one thing that I want them to know is that even when something scares you, if you want something, just go for it. And you, who you are, is enough. And you can do things and you can do big things. Um, you know, my husband has been so encouraging and he, he just, he's complimented me so much, has told me, often how proud he is of me and how much I'm growing and becoming more confident and um, taking, taking charge. I mean, realize what you're capable of. You kind of step into that. And I'm like, it's, it's been nine weeks, but already like, I'm learning how to step into this new role and accept and receive that of myself. Wow. That's really, that's really nice. That's really something. I I want to go back to something you just said just for a moment and then we'll let you go. Cause I know that you've got four and I want to be respectful of your time. Um, so you said when we, when we realize our potential, we, we can step into that. Mm -hmm. Um, man, that's, that's really something because, you know, when I was starting out, I had no idea what my potential was. My head was full of everybody else's thoughts, ideas, opinions of me 
in what the world was. I mean, my my head was full of them, mm -hmm. right? And it had really taken me down a path that I didn't want to be in anymore. And was I was probably going to be dead or in prison at some point. I mean, I was 24 years old when I got clean. Um, and, you know, it's taken a lot of reprogramming. Yeah. And, 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 and also realizing my potential and you're right. It, it's, it's amazing to continue to step into it and see what you're capable of. I, I mean, I look around at what we're doing here at legendary and go, whew, unbelievable. I mean, who is this? What's going on here? Oh, wait, let me step into this real quick. Let me step into this potential that I have. And, and I'm, I, I always also surprise myself by what, what, what I'm capable of. I, I always tend to underestimate myself. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, I love how you, how you mentioned that. Um, I want to let you go. And I want to tell you that it's, it's, you're so new and you, but it, it's so nice to talk to you and, and hear your, your story and have you share from such an early standpoint, nine weeks into this, as, as you, as you stated, not, you're not getting rich overnight. You're, you're, climbing the mountain one step at a time you know and uh it's 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 exactly how it's supposed to be done and occasionally you'll you'll take a big old giant step up that mountain and maybe you might trip and and, and just fall down the stair one or two but you'll catch yourself and and you'll keep going and that's the way this is um what would you say to the brand new person this morning who was in that same place that you were back in 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 november and they were of 2022 and they were getting ready to, or, or December, and they were getting ready to make that decision. It's fallen in their lap. Maybe they, you know, weren't particularly looking for it. What do you say to that person today um, uh, based on your experience over the last nine weeks? I would tell them not to let fear get in the way and to go for it and just dive in and go for it because it will, it'll change who they are how they feel about themselves and that in turn is going to bring them just a wealth all the way around so i mean do not negotiate with fear you know mm. <laughs> dang it you heard the lady so um t tell us your handle here before we let you go uh, announce it to everybody who's listening i want to make sure i have it right so we can send them to support you yeah, so it's to rule and to thrive. Okay, got it. To rule and to thrive. And that's T U R U L L underscore and underscore to underscore thrive. So right. each, each word has a space in between it with an underscore. Yes. Well, Nicole, you've you you rocked it. You knocked it out of the pork this morning. So thank you for your time and we'll let you get back to your wonderful family. Okay. And keep up the wonderful work. Okay. Thanks, Dave. All right. Talk to you later. All right, my friends. Uh, there it is. Wow. Um, I never cease to be in to, to, to walk away from this show, both amazed and inspired by what people are capable of. Um, it just it, it really it really is a great reminder for me and hopefully for you, too. Uh, to hear these stories and to remember that you have the same potential. Uh, you may not look the same, you may not sound the same, and that's what makes you beautiful and perfect, right? But man, you got some amazing potential hidden in there. And when you realize it, and as Nicole said, and you step into it, you and those around you, as Nicole pointed out with her husband being probably pretty blown away. I mean, obviously complimenting, saying, hey, you're growing, but you'll also blow the people around you away as well. You will totally blow the limitations that they may have placed on you out of the water as well. And your husband, your wife might not be purposefully placing limitations on you, but they do. Uh, our parents do, our friends, everybody's got limits, you know. And when you step into your potential, when you realize it, you know, when you just kind of take a risk on yourself and say, okay, I'm going to step into that. I see it here. I see what I'm capable of. You will not only shatter your own limitations, but you will shatter everybody's limitations around you. And it's a really cool thing. And so congrats to Nicole. And my friends, thank you for being here and listening. We'll be back tomorrow for another episode of Wake Up Legendary, the show where we interview our actual students for Christmas sakes. It's not a guru-only conversation. Um, as a matter of fact, no gurus allowed. 
only real people, only real conversations, only real stories.